Good boy. There's a psychopath watching us. <laughs> judging. He's th that's exactly what he's thinking about us right now. Why are you judging me? <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's judging us. He's he like, has Look had at those bored. Bored. enough. Bored. Facing me. That's probably what he likes it because he's like, well, they all give me attention right now. So they're all facing me. He thinks we're sitting to me. here watching yeah. him. They, we probably think we're talking about him too because we. He's so cute. We look in his direction. this? All right, guys, we're back. Another week, another day indoors. We could be outside, but I don't know that I trust the wind today. So. Yeah, but it's a lot better. Yeah. Like, literally, yeah, we're 10 degrees cooler than last time. So yeah. yeah. It was that kind of heat where, like, you just started randomly falling asleep. Yes, yes. <laughs> because you couldn't move. Well, and plus you didn't want to do... Anything. There was, there was just like, what do I do? I'm going to train, but then when I stop training, i got to be all sweaty. When it, At least if I'm training, I could be disgusting. Yeah. But then once I leave, it's like, now I did all the work to get clean and not be disgusting. Bicycle. And I'm disgusting again. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking, it never ends. I, I think I sweated for 10 days, like consecutive. I would just get home and air conditioning in the room and just, yeah. I'm going to stay in the room. The first, the hottest day when we were training with neoprene on, I turned around and Julian's just like, <laughs> pulls everything <laughs> off totally naked. He's like, I'm too hot. It's done. <laughs> yeah, it's over. I'm done with my session. Thank you. <laughs> we're done. Like these people sitting outside, like, you want to look in? That's what you're going to see. It reminds me of like, like the, there's like a power move that you would do when, like when you're in high school, you go up to the, this is probably an American thing, maybe just, maybe just a me thing, <laughs> oh, but you go up to like, you go up to like the urinal where all the guys are peeing and you just go, one guy, you just go pants and undies down to the ankles and you pull your shirt up and... <laughs> no, I did not do that. <laughs> That's a power move. That's how we you were, own the bathroom. We were just talking yesterday <laughs> about the, the way to make sure that men don't piss all over the place is by putting a dot in the toilet bowl. Give to a target. Give yeah. yeah, give a target. Yeah. That's, it's, so there's a guy, I, was it here? Was it, is it there? Whatever, but there's a guy who started the revolution of stopping men from pissing all over the bowl by putting a fly. Just painting a fly. Painting a fly on it, and every guy was trying to, was aiming for the fly. And then they discovered that it actually worked, that guys stopped pissing all over. <laughs> brilliant. It's brilliant. The guy was a genius. And since then, your nose for men are much cleaner. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a guy now who puts a, like a, a golf ball or stuff, because every guy aims for I knew the Cheerio method was a thing, but yeah. it's apparently for adults too. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So you have to understand human psychology. Like this is how the shit gets done. Human side always. It's so playing the odds. So I have a real quick story. Last night, yesterday, you guys went took Yaya out of camp, so rented the car. Yeah. Two weeks of freedom. Two weeks yeah. of freedom. Yeah. And she camp. is so excited yeah. to we're, not we're, have us. We're doing it for her. That, that's what <laughs> it we're doing. It was her idea. We totally do. It is actually. So we're doing it for her totally. Yeah. So so but yesterday then because I was out at the office for a couple days and it was hot. But Julian's like, well, someone's we'll stay and watch the dog. And I was like. Fuck yes, air conditioning, deck on the roof, like perfect, can't beat it. So I go to sleep in the guest bedroom and I go and I sit down and the bed just goes Kush! <laughs> And then I'm like, well fuck it, I'm already in it. It's, like, uh, it's this point. I'm like, not coming out yeah. anymore. So then so. I so I lay down thinking whatever that is, I'll sort out later. And I lay down and Kush! and a couple hours later I roll over and Kush! like the pieces that hold the bed onto the bed were just breaking underneath it. And, and so finally I got up and I was like, I'm not going to deal with it. So I go sleep on the couch till water. And then I get up this morning and I'm like, now I got to figure out if I got to buy Julian a fucking bed. Did you sleep on the couch? Well, just for the second half of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Rue. I was just saying, you let you? Yeah, yeah. But, we, uh, but, but then I found out it was just, you, if you're heavy enough, those things have a little stretch in them. And so they, so they bend down and, and then, then they, they go off. further yeah. and then they just become too short. So they just fall exactly. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's old school. So I didn't break them. I just had to put them all back in. Thank you, Super Ikea. Down. But I did end up in the bed, like really in it, <laughs> you know, in the basket. Like a hammock. So apparently there's a limit in weight. There is, and it's is whatever it is is lower than me, for sure. So, yeah, it, well, at least we know yep. that now. Yep. Okay, there you go. Not skinny enough, Tyler. <laughs> it's between 105 enough. and 130. Yeah, somewhere in there. But anyway, so Kayla, you're here today. I'm here. You were here every day, actually, just not on camera. Yeah. She's yeah. usually on the other right side. She's usually hiding on the She's other the side. She's the second half of the judging yep. panel that we have. She's also the we only person Carla. that normally knows that the cameras are still running, which now we, we'll never know. So, so you'll know. You might but. hear the podcast, but not see it. Because, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, Kayla, you've been training quite, uh, I'd say still it's fairly similar to what you've been doing for a while, but you're changing your targets, yes. if you will, in your training. Yes. My metrics of success are now different. Yeah. 
Ah. And is, are you, so you have switched to doing training towards some powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Is that more of a thing that you just want to have that experience? Or is that, what is, like, why that? So Julie and I spent some time talking about narrowing down my goals, right? Like, okay, I'm still going to be 5'9", probably hover around 160. Is that ideal for Five, 170. a CrossFitter <laughs> to go individually? Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. and am I, was I enjoying it? Yeah, I was enjoying it, but my goals were I wanted to be, I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be able to still move. Um, my body weight around yeah. and be out of breath. So Julian said, what about powerlifting? I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but she also wants to get accomplished into mm -hmm. an activity. And yeah. I was like, all right, so if we look at it, again, from a rational perspective, you're 5'9", five nine, five nine comfortably at 165, 170, mm -hmm. uh, really strong naturally. And for oh. and your bench press is not compromised by being that tall, which normally it is. So that's, Actually, that's good. well, yeah. let's talk about that because her basic numbers, right? You know, entering powerlifting was three eighty five on the deadlift, so that's what that's one hundred seventy kilos for your yeah. metric system out there. She can probably bench eighty kilos, one eighty five, right? Mm -hmm. If not uh, two hundred ninety kilos, and she can squat in the one forties, yeah, right. And that's entering, that's getting off CrossFit, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, you know, as a start. Those are high numbers yeah. for a 72 kilo lifter. Which I didn't know because the <laughs> last time I mentioned any of my numbers when someone asked me, they're like, that's it? Yeah. Like, for almost 400 pound deadlifts, you should be well above that. It's what not a true. What a crazy expectation not though, like how far? No, if you watch you Instagram know? and Steffi Cohen yeah. and all the people there, yeah, but Honestly, like we add your totals, we look right now national level in the US, you are easily top 10, if not top five, yeah. especially with that bench. Yeah. With a bench over 90 kilo, because I bet you she'll get to 100 kilo bench. Yeah. She gets to that, it's good anywhere. A 100 kilo bench at 72 kilo is fairly, um, Isabella Van Helsing, that's her bench. Is <laughs> Van Westenberg, whatever. I call her Van Helsing because I think it fits her. She has a 200 kilo plus squat. Yeah. She should be named Isabella Van Helsing. I think that should be her nickname. But anyway. Um, it's a compliment. Yes. Totally is. Von Helsing, he's a badass. Yeah. He yes. killed Dracula. How can you not now, be a badass when you kill Dracula? Now you got to remember that we did learn something when we talked with Lou and Chantel is that maybe the compliments that we would normally give to men, women don't receive the right. same way. So I'm just Meaning translating. Like, Isabella, like, it's like a you're compliment. a fucking beast. You're maybe going to be like, well, maybe I don't want to be a that beast. Was a night, that Isabella, was a ask your coach, Mike Torscherer. He will tell you this is a compliment. Yes. <laughs> Being called Van Helsing is totally a compliment. <laughs> that means you slay beasts. Yeah. How is that not a compliment? So women. Anyway. So, so before this point, you were there and you had so so you're, you're training but you're still pushing for crossfit beforehand yeah right? yeah i wanted my goals were i want to be strong i never want to compromise my strength i yeah. still kind of want to be relatively the strongest person in the room mm -hmm. to a degree uh, but i wanted to be successful in a sport like i wanted to just go all at it and and achieve some level of success whether that was going to a competition and placing whether it's a crossfit or competition mastery or of an activity yeah. Yeah. yeah and so uh power lifting seemed like a good fit because i love conventional lifting mm -hmm. i already have a some base of strength and well, okay, where she starts, let's say she's starting CrossFit now because she only has two, three years of experience, right? Mm -hmm. So you look where she starts at CrossFit, where she starts at powerlifting. Her size, I was like, look, we can make you good at CrossFit, but where is the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Considering that if we want to keep your strength, you're going to be 5'9", 165. So you could be at the CrossFit game on a team. As an individual, it's going to be harder. Yeah. Right. So, but in powerlifting, with the numbers we start with, I was like, you, you'll end up on a, uh, you can end up top five in the world with plus, three to four years of work. Plus, that's a pursuit that I think for you, because strength has been like a, the common yeah. thread throughout all of it. It's like, well, at the very least, I need you want those lifts to improve anyways. Mm -hmm. And what I see so often with, especially people from CrossFit, is they'll say, well. Yeah, I would love to back squat more, right? Because then that'll carry over this and that, right? And my question is always like, then why don't you get better at back squatting? Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, but I still want to do seven Metcons a week. Yeah. And it's like, well, those are different things. It's also not a, a path. It can circle back on itself, right? Like I can, I, when I walked into a competition, there were a few events that I knew that I, that would always be in my game. It would be 
uh, any max lift, whether it was Olympic lifting mm-hmm. or powerlifting. Yeah, you had a, by the way, you had a 195 snatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like my clean and jerk was my better lift. Yeah. Okay. By the and way, what was that again? I think I'd heard that. 240. 240. Now, didn't you have a regular jerk out of the rack that was way heavier? My clean, clean. was 255. Okay. Um, but like, <laughs> so I kind of have like, those were my, and, and moving any sort of weight from over here to over there was mm-hmm. what I was going to be good at. You told me. By the way, she did a full 40 yoke carry. Nice. That's, yeah, that would be. It's like the third time I picked up a yoke. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, that was, I believe four, 480 was the women's nationals weight would have been. Yeah, yeah, 72. Year. So you're right Like there, you yeah. give her one year of strongman, she goes to national. Yeah. Like a strongman, I have no doubt. You let me train her for that for, after the powerlifting. When she gets to the level she wants to be, I'll, I'll dabble with, yeah. you'll make her do strongman because I'm not going to coach her. <laughs> but you'll make her, whatever, <laughs> you know how much people pay? I know. Anyway, pay anyway. Um, like we'll get you to podium at nationals in yeah. strongman. But it's something that builds upon, like if I ever decide, hey, like I, because I do enjoy CrossFit as a sport. Yeah. You, and you don't want to trade in all of your fitness to get strong. Right. No, but it's a matter of, by the way, there's nothing wrong with enjoying being strong, right? No. There's nothing wrong with enjoying being endurant. Mm-hmm. I don't get it, but I understand that some people enjoy like doing seven macons a week. That's cool. But which one is the one that makes you, that gives you joy? Yeah. Right. In your case, is strength. Yeah. I was like, then why won't we go toward that? And that does not mean you have to stop CrossFit. It's just why don't we specialize you yeah. towards just strength? get better at this stop because then you, you will be better at the other. The thing. one that makes you that gives you joy. Otherwise, yeah. you're not right. going to be good at it. When when I first moved, I was still doing CrossFit. I did the open. I was still training really hard. I still train really hard now, but. We, I was starting to play a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. what was the thing that I either woke up really excited about or, like, after I was finished training, I felt really good about. And when, when we said, like, how cool would it be to have a thousand pound total? I was like, that's what I'm doing. That's the one, yeah. but, but when she looks on Instagram, she looks at girl that weigh 170, bodybuilder, muscle everywhere, strong. I was like, you don't look at the 5'6", 145, skinny bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you look always at the larger women who mm-hmm. can, move the, the way around without being fat, which I understand completely, yeah. and I, I second the motion entirely. Uh, but I'm like, that's who you want to be. It's obvious. You don't have to be forced into that. 145 pounds for you is ridiculously low. Yeah. That's pretty you, skinny. That would not be. <laughs> Did you see that? Like, I know you had your abs, but you were skinny. Like, skinny. Operation Skinny Bitch is over. Like, and I said that for myself, thank you. But uh, yeah, that's not who she was looking yeah. at. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a woman at like 175, 180, muscle everywhere, still lean, but being able to carry the weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Like the whole Amazon look, me, I'm like, I wish Wonder Woman looked more like her than <laughs> what's her name, Bardo, or whatever her name is. Yeah. That's, um, but it creates an interesting thing now because you've trained with this as a part of mm-hmm. all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And now you have to, you're really focusing on that and the rest is more to fill in underneath it right. Now, right you're doing enough conditioning to not fuck it up and enough balance and everything else work to just make sure you're not don't have too many holes in your game two years ago anybody okay so first of all i've never had a coach yeah. even the coaches when i started with my sister and my brother-in-law who would like give me some suggestions and the coach there at the time was like well you're really strong so just keep Doing getting it? strong. Yeah. I, and, that's, that's good coaching, but yeah, just good, keep doing what you're doing. At, it's actually not bad, really. But like, honest. no one. <laughs> you're not gonna fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but no one to be like, stop. Like, pay attention, focus in, and learn skills. So, two years ago, it's stop worrying about getting strong, learn how to move your body, and lose some freaking weight, mm-hmm. which was good advice. Except for, I did all of that. And it, and then it was still wasn't good enough. Like, yeah. why aren't you why aren't you deadlifting more than four hundred pounds? Three eighty five is like should be pretty light for someone your size. And that's not true at all. I don't what do you mean get, your size? By the way, but what do they get those numbers from? That's crazy to me. Yeah. I, I you know that, that well that's the thing. It's, it's whatever, but. That is, that's strange. No, because they look like... There's plenty, you know, of, there's plenty one, of men that are 5'9", 165 in CrossFit that don't deadlift over 400 pounds. But, but the not point, at the games, but, but let's be honest, no, those boys aren't deadlifting. They see 150 either. at the game means 365, so therefore 165 means 410. Yeah. No, you're looking at Instagram, the top women exactly. in the world. But they, a 400 pound deadlift for a woman is way, it's way up good. there. But the point, like, the point of all that is I got to those numbers actually having no idea how to yeah. back squat. Yeah. I have no idea how to bench. It's 
yeah. pretty pathetic. But to be able to bench 190 without knowing what I'm doing is okay. Yeah. Very small. Okay. A body weight bench for a woman is really, mm -hmm. really good. Any woman that benches over 100 kilo, trust me, is world class. For sure. Easily. That's a. That's and I don't care about the body weight. Yeah. I think somebody had compared to, we talked about this the other day, you can compare percentages of all these things yeah. at that openpowerlifting.com mm -hmm. so you can really see what yeah. what percentage of women will deadlift over 100 kilos in each yeah. weight class and it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of cool so, so you have a bench press especially over yeah. Yeah, 100 kilo bench press left. Yep. Oh, you'll be surprised yeah. I've seen uh, 100, the 72 weight class uh, there's a lot of women that who have a bench press around 100 kilos between 100 and 105 when you get to 110 that's that was up there. Yeah. We're talking top three to five at the at worlds. It's like yeah. that's why I'm like I, you have a future. I think this. like a hundred kilo raw bench press for a woman is Fuck the equivalent yeah. of two thirty for a man, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a five plates yeah. for a man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you'd be surprised. In, by the way, you'd be surprised in powerlifting. There's a lot of very very good powerlifters that can't bench press mm -hmm. that are stuck in the two hundred kilos. Yeah. Which, by the way, I can't do two hundred. My max was one eighty, so I'm not dishing. Yeah. I'm just saying like. Bodybuilders are very impressive in that matter. We'll do a podcast on that one time. Yeah. Like every pro bodybuilder out there, that uh, benches over five hundred. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane in powerlifting. That's yeah. a huge number in powerlifting. Yeah, it's, it's so it's huge. Yeah, it's so crazy. So, Kaylee, you've then tried to fit this new priority in, and what have you had to shuffle around? Like your days are different now, for sure. So, in the beginning, I thought I could just kind of do everything the same and just get stronger. Yeah, which lasted about two days, and I. I couldn't move. Like I needed three rest days just to get back to <laughs> right. normal. So first of all, we had to switch from two, two training a day to one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she was always doing the second session to punish herself. It's like, whatever I didn't do in the first, I'm going to do in the second. I was like, it doesn't work like that. So the, she was trying to switch to basically heavy conditioning. So I was like, that you can't do. You, this is the one thing that has wrecked even the most is heavy yeah. conditioning like that because you guys push so hard into it like it's it so hard wrecks to come back people. from that it's mentally because so then hard. there's also not a lot of wins to be had there yeah and by the way you know, days off yeah we have to talk about having days off yeah so that I was a hot conversation the I, I'm sticking to the you have 90 minutes if you're not finished you're done um, but you get one try and so with the neoprene the second the neoprene comes off you're done or if like you stop sweating you're done or if you like if you start moving like shit you're done yeah if Which, i see it on your face that you're starting to get you starting to decomposing mentally mm -hmm. you're done like quality work yeah and the coolest thing about training like this like prioritizing my strength is if i make it to 60 minutes that was a good day. Yeah. Because yeah. this is really hard. Yeah. It's exhausting. I can always tell when I write like our powerlifting template, which is the powerlifting term is a little bit flat. It's a, yeah. it's a strength template, template yeah, really. Exactly, but yeah. like but I still base it around those big three lifts because I do them in my training. You know, I'll still use a, a squat bench a deadlift. By the way, can template. we mention that? Yeah. Like we all of us here do all three lifts with barbells. Yep, absolutely. I squat, they lift, and bench. So I think there's some mis some people get misconstrued. Yeah, I don't do the, everything talk about sandbags. Yeah. sandbags, ropes, and yokes, and those yeah. other things. Those are good tools for building strength. Right. By the way, they are not my base work. Yeah. I just enjoy squatting, they lifting, and benching. Yeah. By the way, st static strength is my weakness, so yeah. I'm always saying it. Uh, I'm much better at carrying. My main stuff is carries. Yeah. Because I believe that's where you get the strongest. I'm obviously biased because that's what I'm good at on top of yeah. it. But that doesn't mean I don't use the typical power lifts yeah. as a way to get stronger. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's like everything. It's a good, useful tool. Yes. So, so, but I'll use that, and I can tell often though when I'll uh, we'll get new clients that are doing the template, yeah. and and sometimes the questions that I'll get are like, this doesn't seem like it's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> because that's what she said. Because it like, might be yeah. only like yeah. six. Segments that are only a you know a couple things that are two things. No, and but you do two sets. Two lifts, per, two set per lift, max. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that drove you insane at first. We uh, and, and so so I could always I was like, buddy, you're not gonna. I'm sorry, you're not gonna metcon your way to getting stronger. That's not. You're not gonna metcon your deadlift. Yeah, like yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, like, like if you're gonna get stronger, you don't get to do this shit for time. And so and so that's a piece like for you. With, mom, yeah. I would say for you it would be rest time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, days off, days off, rest time, and less work. Yeah. So yeah. So in the beginning, my sessions looked like uh, I was super excited. Two sets of this was really easy. Just kill it. Like, yep. come on, this was not enough work. And each week, if I was a dog, each week my tail just went a little <laughs> bit lower until week six. I was Seven. like, yeah. I, 
I'm not sure. Week seven, I was done because yeah. I, I actually couldn't right. keep up with so the numbers. So can we back up and explain all this? Yeah. Because there's a, there's a context to this. First of all, uh, let's explain strength. Why well, Sorosia has to, to switch to our strength. Strength is three things. Neural output, cap skill, mm -hmm. capacity of the muscle to contract. Right. So capacity of the muscle to contract, she has that extremely high with all the CrossFit and assistance work, right? Uh, skill, she went into it going, I know how to deadlift, to squat and to bench, I'm good. Then we go neural output, which is I'm going to do train twice a day. Mm -hmm. None of the, so none of that training was favoring those three things. So we had to go neural output, which means more rest, better quality work. So usually shorter and more into it. Right? I had I had to literally to... set a clock because yeah. Yeah. there were times where Julian was like, You're, "This is not so CrossFit. Just... Like you need to take two to three minutes. Yes, minimum neural output. Like because she would go into the next set. I'm like, you're not ready. Mm -hmm. You cannot generate the intensity required for ninety percent for four right now. Yeah, and this is what we talked about yeah, last week. Is that you know strength mm -hmm. is about performance not yeah. fatigue yes mm -hmm. like yes you have to get fatigued to do the da 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 da, da but like you we're, when we're talking neural output that is about you meeting the force on the bar every time when yeah. you need to in, do it. and wanting to be so in that fight mode not flight yeah. she was going into it going i gotta do the work i'm like no yeah. that's not how this works you have to meet the work you, you yeah. cannot endure powerlifting yeah like for all of you out there you can endure conditioning you cannot endure by the way you should not endure conditioning yes. but you can if you endure power, strength work, yep. you will break yeah, you mentally will and physically. Very quickly. You'll get depressed within three weeks, your system will crash and you'll, you'll get hurt. Mm -hmm. Like you have to meet the bar. Like this is you, like there's an entire mindset, right? Yeah. That people don't understand where you go to the bar and it's either you or the bar, but someone, someone is winning this. Yeah. When you go under a thousand pound yoke, someone will win, mm -hmm. right? There's no like, oh, I'm going to go lift and we'll see how it feels. I was like, well, that's why I was squatting. I was like, you're going to have to fucking... Uh, oh. Week five on my second set of five squats was the first moment that I flinched. And after that, I, I said, I, like, I get it now. Because once I flinched at that bar, I was done. Okay, so let, let's go back and explain why, what you mean by week five. So neural output, that's when we had to do like the days off. And the, you need only one session, not two, because she was crashing so, so, so bad. Then there was a skill work where she had to actually learn to deadlift uh, and so, so that I want to explain what I mean by that because she knew how to deadlift, but that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is at the competition, it's going to be three, two, one, go. Not when you're ready, not when you feel like it, not the once right in a blue moon. The right song comes on. The right song, and you know, like today I'm going to do five or today I'm going to do one. It's like, no, on August 2nd, I have to do a max lift. So that means there's a program that has to be established. You have to pick for the meet. And when I say go, three, two, one, turn yeah. it on. That is not the same shit as doing it with, you know, yeah. like just feeling like it or not, yeah. right? And there's another problem is in powerlifting competition, you start with a squat. By the time you get to the bench, your upper back is tired. That affects your bench. Look at powerlifting competition. See the guy who struggles on his third attempt or gets a PR on his squat third attempt, right? You will see a guy who usually will miss his third attempt on the bench. Yeah. Unless, like, see if the guy can do a max third attempt PR on the squat and the same thing on the bench. And usually you'll see the guy bunking on the bench because the squat took so much out of your upper back. And now you're going more tired into the deadlift where your upper back is smoked between the squat and the bench. When you squat, when you bench properly, your upper back gets very tired as well. So now you're gonna have to deadlift with a weaker uh, upper back, forget your lower back. But by the way, some people also blow up their lumbar erectors during the bench because they arch so much. Mm -hmm. So now your back is tired going into the deadlift and you're going to have to give me your max one rep on command when I, by the way, it's you started squatting at 9 and now it's 6 p.m. or 4 p.m. If it's a low call, it's 4 p.m. <laughs> and I'm like, 3, 2, 1, <coughs> give me your best deadlift. Oh my God, that's a yeah. whole different fucking ballgame. Yeah, because you're building for a whole day you know mm -hmm. that's that is the thing is this it's is exhausting. now progressing towards a test yeah um that test i think is important to you still like you want to do well i mm -hmm. think you know obviously oh, that's yeah. just the way you are I, yeah. 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 yeah yeah but but also then for you is the other side of that test right so the other side of that meet if you will you still your goal is i need to take have as much strength as i can to then carry with me to whatever i do after that whether yeah. it's come back to doing just fitness or to pursue this even further and how do you 
how do you prioritize that race, right? Because you're not going to sell everything out. Not for by this. doing everything in three days' time. Right. Yeah. So now we back, back. Well, let's take it one at a time. So we had neural output, so that's why we diminished. Right yeah. now we have the skill, so it's learning powerlifting as a sport. Yeah. Right. So that's being strong, but being strong on command. Right. And so, so that also means the approach to training is different. Instead of just deadlifting, doing maxes. Because uh, we started to explain the, the to use the eight coin cycle, I'm going to explain. She had to do a set of ten. I'm like, don't just bang ten. Your chance is to do ten reps where at eight you're tired and you have to give me two more perfect technically where you don't hitch where you get ready for the platform when you're tired. So there's an entire thing with the eight coin cycle that is ready to get you to learn the skill. And then the capacity of the muscle to contract, which means the assistance work. And she took the assistance work as a chance to go as a chance to get stronger. So what does that mean? That means every assistance work had to get heavier as the cycle progressed. So the main lifts had to get heavier and the assistance work had to get heavier, but the volume could not go down. And yeah. since he said and so 10 I'm to 12, going, I was doing 12. Yeah. And he said three sets. So <laughs> I would warm up to something that felt heavy and then I was going to do three sets of that. Right. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, on top of that, I gave her the Ed Cohen cycle, which I believe is great. Yeah. The problem is it's 10 weeks, and no one survives past week seven, except Ed Cohen. I was going to be the one. <laughs> she was going to be the one. While upping up the assistance work, I was like, so with Richard, we're like, don't do it. Like, we, I, I tried, Richard tried, Devon, like, you know, yeah. I was extremely strong powerlifter at Torrance, and everything. Hey, Devon, Devon Brazil, uh, fucker had like a 200 kilo, like tiniest waist, looks yeah. like a bodybuilder, 200 kilo bench, 700 something uh, deadlift, uh, what is that, like in a high five on the squat, with a tiny waist, because yeah. I thought I had to look good. Fucker. Yeah. Uh, dude is 40, <laughs> looks 26, you go like, you know those people, you go like, just go away. Yeah, yeah. Why, why just get hurt or something with that <laughs> tiny waist? Every time his, his back hurt, I'm like, that's because yep. you have a skinny waist. That's why, bitch. Um, strongest dude. It's, it's cycle. So he liked the Bitcoin cycle by week seven, like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Or week six, he was like, I PR, I'm done, right? You can't survive by seven weeks. So, so we told her that. She was like, uh huh. Uh huh. On the side. I'll the go only, sit over there. The and only smart thing that I did was I took 10 pounds off of all of my max lifts. Not on all of them. On the deadlift, you By put 385. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the so, because the first week is two sets of 10. And she's like, I'm going to kill that. So she does, but bouncing on the deadlift, I'm like, and hitching. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? None of those reps counted. That's, you're not doing CrossFit. Reset. So I made her reset each deadlift. Yeah. So 10 reps with a reset. And she starts to look at me going, like, well, that feels much harder. It's rude. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, no shit. Well, we've, I've, that's a piece I always would, when I would have people that would transition from, you know, CrossFit to, to powerlifting is what you'd have to teach is that specifically. Now, I taught Mike in my CrossFit gym that way anyways, because I always taught hard reset at the bottom every time. So no touching. 10 times one reps. Yeah, yes. mainly because that carried over to your maximal strength because that's the moment where you got to have it when you want one. So, yes, yeah. so because the end goal is one though, that it's important that you change that because that is skill. a skill. That's a skill. Approach. Second part of strength, skill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not 10 reps, it's 10 times one rep. Yeah. Same thing when you do five squats. No, no, it's not five squats. You don't get to do that. It's five times one squat. Every single rep has to be the same one. Like I think the, the main thing, uh, sorry, we'll go back to you, but like the, one of the biggest mistakes I see in CrossFit is that the five reps. Is you, they, They're missing a very important link, which remember Captain Kirk talked about? Not, not, no, not that Captain Kirk. Uh, it was like, God Kirkowski. Damn it, Julian. Yes, Kirkowski. Yes, 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 Captain Kirk, come on. Yes. Kirk Kirkowski, <laughs> who was a multiple time uh, IPF world champion. Yep. And he talks about the fact that he was a, he's a, the guy who did a thousand pound squat for a double yep. with a single suit squat. Oh, yeah. Captain Kirk, just, um, and he has, uh, Google him. He has a song where he goes from cadet to captain, where he's his seminar where he explains the squat. And for him, he explained, and that's something I worked on for years, which is the greatest thing when it comes to that. That, uh, that, 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 that you have to look at this seminar; it's on YouTube. We explained that he would approach the bar empty, like he would approach it with a thousand pounds. That means his ritual was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So, and then he would enter the cage the same way, same number of steps, put his hands on the bar the same way, get under the bar the same way. So, did everything exactly the same way with the same intent, empty, to thousand pounds no matter how many and then every rep was the same which means he would come up breathe the same way come down the same way so every single rep is a chance to get better at the skill mm -hmm. i worked that for years like i would me the second i would enter my power cage my mind would shift because right. every step was always the same was scripted right and so it allowed me to go and do the squat 
fully confident and I've done thousands of the same reps. Empty barbell to 550 was the same rep, a bit slower at 550, but it was the same thing. And I think that's the most important skill out there is learning the rituals of each lift. Same thing for the squat, same thing for the bench, yeah. so that each lift is the same. That is hard to learn. Because I think what you have to view it as, you know, in, in a sport that is very isolated, you know what I mean? Yep. There are very few variables. There's not a person going to come flying at you, but there are still things that can happen, right? And anytime you can have a bad walkout, when you get into max effort, which is the goal, oh, you, can, you can have a messes. walkout that gets weird, a lift yep. off. So there's bench. Yep, the so guy hands you the bar incorrectly. Yeah. So yep. that repetition, finding that system and finding that, that groove, groove, like has to be, time. is the most important thing. Yep. I, I see when people transition over to it. Because you can, it's still sloppy, but like in CrossFit, people power cleans off the floor or cycling the barbell. Things can get a little bit weird because those aren't max it. effort. Yeah, you know? exactly. And you can run after a bar a little bit as you, yeah. you know. But um, I just think that that repetition, you have to have a system. The groove has that to be you, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is execute that system. And all you're doing then is providing the effort and that's it. And I and that's the part of, of that sport that I really I really liked that part that I, 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 I developed this system and I've and yeah. I just and, and now I just but you, go. You did that basketball for free yeah. throws. Yeah, yeah. You, you do have it, to do the same repetition. They do the same stuff every I time. I was terrible at free throws. Yeah, so maybe I'm not the, 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 the ritual is the same, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. yeah. And so I think for lifting it's actually tremendously important. Yeah. The like I did that in strongman every time. Like my ritual, but that almost unconsciously was it's when I approach the stuff, it's always the same. I think it might have even been Ed Cohen that he said though, like his saying was... Well, he was it, Captain it was, Kirk's mentor. Or, yeah, it was, yeah. But, but it was a thing where he's, I can't remember exactly how he put Every it. Every warm up set should be... Well, yeah, I think it was like it, when you start treating the lightweights like the heavyweights, yeah. the heavyweights will feel like lightweights. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's, I, I, for me, that was the only way I could squat. Yeah. Because squatting was definitely a weakness of mine. So five years, the only way I could squat was by doing that. I, like I've, But then he became probably one of... One of Again, for me, one of my strongest lifts, especially statically. Yeah. Well, this is the first time, too, that I've been training where I, I just came from constant variance. <laughs> like, ADD, training, whatever, yeah. I, it was like, you, you don't spend too much time doing one thing because you have to be good at a million things. So it was always, I am not a tech. I have not been yet a technical athlete. It's usually like, tell me what to do, I'm going to go do it. Because you've never been coached. Right. And yep. so it's always been and like... And I'll be just talented enough to yes, still be yeah. strong enough. Exactly. So then there's yep. not a big, yep. a big thing. And don't get me wrong, like I spent time honing in on technique, watching my own videos. On your own. But it was always me, yep. how did that feel? How did it look? And never outside feedback. So doing this cycle, it was like every day, squat day looked like this. Every day, bench day looked like this. Every day, deadlift day looked like this. And there's no change and you do what you're supposed to. And it was the first time that I was could go, that felt good, that was wrong. That yeah. felt good, that right. felt wrong. Let's start week one. So week you had one enough is, yeah. similar yeah. sessions to where you could then actually figure out what the difference was between one So and I'm one. curious, week one, two sets of 10. Right, what goes through your head? I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Easy, I'm gonna kill that, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm You're gonna like, do 10 weeks. But who uh, the fuck is Ed Cohen? Yeah, but also, I come. but also, if this is the easiest week, this is gonna get bad. No, it's no, 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 that's when she got to week two. Oh, okay. Because week one, she was like, honey, yeah. I got this. Week <laughs> two, she's like, it accumulates. I was like, yeah. <laughs> no shit, it does. Right? I think that's the look the look on her face by week two, she was like, everything is so tired. I was like, I was trying to explain to her like squatting, benching, and, and they lift out a, lo a lot of the same muscles yeah. in weird ways, structurally speaking. And the accumulation of that kind of work is actually super taxing. I was like, you don't understand. You're not deadlifting and squatting heavy usually in the same week with the bench on a regular basis. Like you do it, but with CrossFit, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Maybe you won't daily for three weeks, so you recover. But not when you do that shit, with the assistance work on the same muscle, especially the way she was doing assistance work. I was like, by week three, like you don't understand how tired you're gonna be. Yeah. That's when the, so week two is when the days off started to play. But she was like, I'll, tra I'll tra train six days a week. I was like, how about five? She's like, honey, shut up. <laughs> all right, sure. Week two happened and she's like, so like, when should I put that tired. extra? Yeah. yeah, when should I put that extra day off? Yeah, I'm really I, hungry. I, <laughs> well, I, 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 was that too. I always tell people when they train pretty far away from what training for absolute strength, because training for absolute strength is yeah. just that, right? Yeah. And when you train pretty far away from that, people don't understand 
what the work and rest should be like. And and I always have to remind people all the time, it's like, the strongest human beings I've ever met, and those are some of the strongest, actually the strongest people in the mm -hmm. world, have, almost all of them have one thing in common. They train either three or four times a day. And that's it, or a week, a week, yeah. a week. When I started it. paying attention to successful power lifters, like training schedule and what they're doing, I'm like, oh, are they? can't last more than 90 minutes yeah. what do i think i'm doing yeah. <laughs> okay so week two week two happens and now you're still in the tents but the tents got heavier yeah and i'm learn i'm feeling things like oh that's a hamstring and this is what it's like to squat using this muscle and because we have to do that too by the way we have so to it still is a lot of experimentation in the movement then too which yeah. is the value of that system being higher and that's the point game. right the first yeah. few weeks the exper it's experimentation getting your groove back and learning the groove and or learning the groove the the right muscle that now you start to realize which muscle you like yeah like for example my biggest weakness is probably the bench for 10. Mm -hmm. oh my god i it's anything past eight on the bench and my triceps give up i'm like i need stronger triceps which i knew but uh, so that's when those two weeks you start to go oh mm -hmm. so then you start to match now manipulate the assistance work maybe a bit yeah so, you, so it's actually a valuable assessment tool that the, the beginning Very much of the so. system is... Yeah. Like and by the way, that tells you what the cycle is going to be like too, because mm -hmm. all cycles are different. You're going to see what I mean. Sometimes your triceps are there from the last cycle, but sometimes it's another muscle that gives you some shit. Yeah. yeah. Because by the time week three came around, I think I finally said to him, like, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to learn. Because <laughs> so I, happy to clearly, that. Yeah. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, to some degree, yeah, but... This is just, this has to be a learning opportunity. Sorry, I adjusted so my numbers she, a little. She didn't say, can you help me, please? But in the far corner of her head, that's a little bit what he meant. Don't look at me like that. I'm she still not your coach. Didn't want I acknowledge that. that I didn't know what I was <coughs> doing, and I just put it out there. Yes. <laughs> that if you just happened to be watching and you saw something, you could, set, you could so, make a suggestion. And that's when I was like, all right, so reset your deadlift. Mm -hmm. And then she did, and she was like, fuck you. I hate deadlifts. <laughs> Reset your deadlift, and you have to use straps, because we're not going to do a switch this grip. You have to do there, a double yeah. overhand. Yep. I'm the girl who's never worn knee sleeves. <laughs> I didn't even know how to use a strap. Oh, OK. It was so funny. <laughs> like, I'd You'll, never sumo uh, deadlifted before. Sumo squats are new. My, I, my Straps are like my favorite thing now. I, to the point where I use them way more than I, I need to when I deadlift. Yeah, I still use them. But the issue I kind is of wear them just in case. I have I really, really big yeah. hands. Yeah. So my grip is never really the problem. So I don't need to really train grip. My grip's there when I need it. So I, like I don't straps. know. Yeah. I just like straps. It's fucking no, but, nice. But it's, it, it was awesome because the first three weeks was Welcome to powerlifting. Yeah. But she's so strong. She's lifting weights. So I'm like, shit. Yeah. So she's on week three, benching, wait, wait, like 150 for 10 or something. And I'm like, fuck. Like, it's really good. Hi. Like, those numbers she's achieving are great. But she's banging the assistance work like there's no tomorrow. And like, I can, and she, but she's starting to work on each lift. But I'm like, the amount of work that this represents in a higher percentage, I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to say, like, you know, like, I can't do that. For example, like, I, you know, Rachel wouldn't be able to do either. Yeah. Uh, like, this is really high level work you're doing right now. She's like, no, I feel fine. I'm like, I understand. But, you know, like, it's work and this is not quite crossfit because then she wants to bang the conditioning work. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm going to get fat and I don't want that. And and so then week four <coughs> happens. Hey, get stop. him, buddy. Uh, week four happens. And now we're in the uh, sixes. Or we still... Yeah, we're in the sixes, right? Week week four, week when yeah, week four. Yes. We're getting we go over week four, so now we're in the sixes, uh, fives. Sorry, fives. we're in the fives. We're in the fives. Um, first thing that I said was I don't. I think I'm going to stop doing conditioning for now <laughs> <laughs> because now I'm getting mad that I have two sets of mm -hmm. five that I have to yeah. crush, and that's it. So if I don't hit those five reps, my whole life is going to be ruined for the next until the next week comes and I get to try it again. Yeah. So I don't want anything to get in the way of those five By the reps. way, she's also failing to mention the fact that she hates the second set of five. She's like, I can do the first one. Uh -huh. I don't like the second one. I'm like, no shit. Yeah. That's interesting because that one, that's a, that's a mentality and a nervous system state skill that you have to learn mm -hmm. for the sport, and, right? Yeah. And, and, but I also think that that is very much 
tough guy. Yeah. He's up there. <laughs> like now, look at him now. Like you guys can see, but like he's acting like all all mad and like he's a god dog right now. I'll get that cat for you, Dad. Yeah, exactly. I think I think though that that is also very much a case where you feel like the task is done, mm -hmm. and you know what we talk about. It's like your brain is like, done. I'm done. <laughs> Moving on to my sister's And, and yep. because you know that the stakes of that session are so high, right? You just have two sets, yeah. two target sets, and then the rest is accessory work. Uh, and you really you get up there why and you go all set. into this yeah. first one because you don't want to fuck up your that's day. On the, that's on the squat and the press, by the way, guys. On the deadlift, it's only one set for a very good reason. Yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't make it. Yeah. At first, I was like, that's stupid. And then no, three, yeah. week three, I'm like, this is good. <laughs> I think it's very important because you're coming to explain because uh, CrossFit is whatever happens today, mm -hmm. happens today, tomorrow, who the fuck knows, mm -hmm. right? Whereas powerlifting is about accumulation of work. It's about creating a neural output the day off, getting the skill honed, and going accumulation of work, yeah. right? And it's a much harder mindset to get once you come from CrossFit, where it's just, yeah, hey, whatever happens, tomorrow I might work on double handles, who knows? In, in powerlifting, it's like, oh, strong man, it's like, no, 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 no. CrossFit we need gave, the accumulation. gave me this, the ability though to be able to recover during mm -hmm. the session. No question. Yeah, because you and I Condition are going you, you mm -hmm. to have very different situations between our first and second sets. Yeah. Yep. For me, I'm going to go sit down and be like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, For fuck minutes, me. Yeah. You know? yeah, that was and, heavy. And, yeah. and whereas you are going to be much more capable of, of bringing what you need to bring quicker, mm -hmm. which then is, allows yeah. you to accumulate more work, work. and less time. And for women, by the way, more work is necessary. Yeah. Like I said, one time where I'll say more can be better is women do need more work. There's no question. Yeah. That. When it comes they to can strength, sustain their ability volume. to handle yes, volume. Yes, they can sustain time. volume uh, much better than men. What I see as a downside of CrossFitters is that 90 second rest in between sets. Mm -hmm. Like once you start to hit over 90%, like there's no way you're bringing the energy on the second set. Or yeah. if you do, it's going to take so much, again, out of your head that he'll screw you up for the next week or stuff like that. That accumulation of work, of neural output on a weekly basis. So yeah. having that one or two target sets too though, it almost sounds in practice similar to when we talk about playing against the ghosts, where you yep. have, you've raised the stakes of your session. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, similar to like if I go into Vienna to intelligent strength, that session now costs me four hours of my day. Every right. time I get in and get out, meaning I'm not gonna fucking waste it, or at the very least, I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I might, but I gotta try hard not to. You're gonna try your hardest yeah. not to. Yeah. 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 And if you do fuck it up, you're mad. You're gonna have to try harder the next time. It's yeah. the mm -hmm. first time, and as long as I can remember, that I the plan was to go in and squat, and I said to Julian, "I'm gonna rest today. I'll squat tomorrow," because I knew that it was yep. I I. I didn't feel like I could kill mm -hmm. the workout, and I knew that it was either go in, fail, hate everything, get in a bad place, and have shit work, yeah. or take one more day because you need it, and, and life is going to move on, and tomorrow I'm going to crush it. And I think to clarify too is this isn't because you were feeling hurt or injured. No. Oh. It's because it's that feeling, and if anyone's ever Not focused able to on kill strength, it. Yep. There, there's a feeling where it starts off like feeling like you got in like a little car accident. And then if you, you know what I mean, the next day you're just like, what happened? It didn't seem like yeah. it was that bad of a deal, but my whole body is fucking wrecked. Right or the, you know, jet lag. And then it just gets a, tired, yeah. and then if you don't <laughs> crawl out of that hole, it ends up feeling like you just got hit by a fucking truck. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, and, and you will like, be, what has happened? So, yeah, but the key was that is like, I think, and that's why a lot of people miss is like, I have to do work. No, no, no. Is what you do is, can, you should go to the gym going like, I'm going to fuck shit up. Yeah, I'm going to really, really, really do what I need to do. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to kill this. By the way, you might feel beat up or whatever, and it might not be your best five reps, but you're going to go with intent of, I'm going to fuck shit up. Yeah. If you can't generate that, you need a day off. Yeah. For strength, that's the way it works. That's why the best guy trained four times a week, mm -hmm. maybe five, but not six. Yeah. Because otherwise, you get to the gym going, <sighs> And again, if you endure strength work, you're fucked. And here's the things that I've learned about myself in the last four weeks, like leading up to that point was, if I don't take these weights seriously, I'm going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Because now they're, now they're pretty heavy and I'm moving them for a lot of reps. Mm -hmm. And if I don't prioritize my recovery, instead of having one day off, now I have three days it's gonna take me to recover because I had two really shitty sessions where my head is gone, my body is gone, and you like... You still have to recover, but you still didn't do like, any good work. I'm exactly. digging myself yeah. out of this yeah. hole, I, but I don't have energy. Like, 
the point was not to get the thousand pound total as quickly as possible and then never lift it again. Mm -hmm. The point exactly. is to get there and then and surpass it. it. Yeah, because, and get past it. Because yeah. I, that's and that's an important thing is you can get there, but then what? Like like I think you want to be able to do that, not just once. Mm -hmm. That yeah. has to be a thing that you can do. That's literally the you know? step into the door for me. Yeah. And again, this is by the way, what, what I would like people to understand with the way we do the all the templates and then the skill and everything is it's all about bettering the odds. Yeah. Right? You need to train in a way that gives you the best odds the day off to pull a good heavy yeah. weight. Yeah. Right? And to do that, you need the skill and you need to go three to one. You need to be able to lift on command. That's a skill, whether you feel like shit or not. Because by the way, we always say like auto regulation in training. Yes. Mm -hmm. Competition. I don't give nope. a shit. I don't yeah. care how you feel. It's three to one best lift yep. of for you that day. But this is a skill that has to be developed. It's not that simple. Like to do, to be able to run with an 800 pound uh, yoke on your back requires a certain mindset that again, the day of the competition is three to one now. And in me in competition, usually that now I didn't feel like it. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but this, <laughs> I can count the number of competition where it felt good because yeah. I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you start at six in the morning. Like, by the way, like the la my last two competition strongmen, there was no warm up weights. Yeah, it's, it's actually way more common than people would think. Yeah. 800 pounds. So the, we did eight or 840 yoke mm -hmm. with no warm up. Yeah. Three to one, run with that. <coughs> run with 800 pounds on your back. Without warming up. Yep. I've had competitions that Not take, a good idea, but... <clears throat> take eight to ten hours. And what happens is you'll get set up. They'll be setting up, say, a log or a car deadlift mm -hmm. or something. So they'll set it up with no real weights on it. You can kind of <laughs> practice and do your thing, but it's never even getting close to your warm up. Also, I can't build up to my warm up because mm -hmm. when I get done practicing on whatever log weight they have mm -hmm. there, now I have to wait an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> for all the lightweights, middleweights. Yeah. Heavyweights to go before even the super heavy. I didn't get even the chance to warm up on yeah. the empty stuff. So most of my stuff was like legitimately my most of my biggest strongman lifts were like I'll do some push-ups, yeah. I guess, to just get some blood pumping. Otherwise, I hadn't moved. That, in an that's hour. the one time you'll see strongmen with elastic bands. Yeah, like, <laughs> because I don't know, that's I just, the only shit we got. Yeah, some blood. Yeah. Right. So there's a skill there where is, you have to understand that lifting max weight outside of your normal environment on command, not feeling awesome. That, this, that's a toughness that you acquire in the gym by basically training even, you know, like in that kind of mm -hmm. environment where it's like, uh, so that's part of the skill. That's what the programming also should bring you to, uh, toward is learning that's kind of a skill. So let's talk about this skill, right? So the yeah. skill of where, like we talked about, the repetition, the approach to the bar, uh, the minutia of being judged like you would be in a powerlifting, right? We have you to work on that too. You yeah. need and all that being stuff. filmed, people watching, yes. that's yes. a whole different yes. podcast altogether. Also, right if you've never been to a powerlifting meet, I hope you like listening to Pantera every lift that you do. <laughs> well, and there's lights <laughs> then that you have to like wait for. Yeah. By yeah, the way, you have to wear a singlet. Yeah. Oh, I can wait for that yeah. one. Yeah. And people watching. So sometimes I put a camera in your face just for <laughs> to get you sweet. And I'm like, but honey, it's going to happen soon. Yeah. Fuck off. So how do you, I mean, I know how you can build that skill, which is many reps, discipline, you know, doing it all identically, focus on finding the best system for walkouts, for liftoffs, for all that that works for you, right? Your approach to deadlifting. But how do you then, so you want that as honed as possible, mm -hmm. but then how can you be prepared for the weird variables then? Like what if you've trained this perfectly grooved walkout mm -hmm. on your squat and you get it on your third attempt and it's heavier than everything you felt before and you get out and you have a slight misstep. You know, is training so much within that yeah. perfect system? That's that's true. Is, but is, that's experience. So that's yeah. experience under the bar, and that's a number and maybe of that's meets some, that and you've Maybe done. that's something you have to learn in a meet. Yeah, and I think I, that, I believe so. I think I that's a skill. So. Another skill that CrossFit gave me, at least on the competitive side yes, of it, is it's it. Very good. It taught me good that point. there are always going. There's something, something is always going to go wrong. So you don't have much of a freak out button in that moment. You just know you got. No, I think you'd be better equipped because of CrossFit. Yeah. What yeah. I yeah. what I know for sure is my ability to move the weight where it needs to go is not going to change mm -hmm. so long as my mindset does not waver. Yeah. Like if I say this is what we're doing, yeah. then and then I will give it 110 percent. But if I walk up to that bar going, I'm not sure, yeah. it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter what happens between that, my approach to the bar until I'm finished, as long as I stay like right there and go down and up. Yeah. 
That's it? Do you okay. have, it's an excellent point. I would tell powerlifters out there, the, the women uh, powerlifters to actually do CrossFit and do competition CrossFit to learn mental toughness. Yeah. Because with powerlifters, you know, like they all like the numbers and the graphs mm -hmm. and then everybody's super like anal about everything. Go to a CrossFit competition where it's all over the place. You have stuff that you would never want to do, but you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You're not ready for it. And the shit happens in the middle and someone bumps you or the, ju the judge. The no pull-up bars you. are powder coated, not steel bars. Yeah. The oh, they're wobble, hot as shit. Yeah, uh, the wobble have... shaped like an egg. It's not perfectly <laughs> circled. Right. You don't have your chalk anymore. The judge no reps you for shit. Like you, three to one, fuck, I'm late. They uh, give you a piece of equipment you've never touched before. Yeah. Right. I would tell people to go for mental toughness. I believe in that sense, the, the crossfit competition is great because you yeah. have to make it work anyway. Yeah. You know, things go up and down in a long workouts. That means shit will happen in the middle of it, yeah. and you have to learn to come back from it. I think that's a very important skill yeah. in that sense. And so, okay, so now week six comes about, and now you're going in the triples. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm not sure if this was it the right decision. It sounds like it's probably going to go how you thought it was going to go then, right? <laughs> well, there is a part of me that goes, well, maybe you're not as strong as you thought you were. Because in my mind, like, I was supposed to be the girl who did this 10-week cycle because at the end of the 10-week cycle, it was this really awesome 30-pound PR that I just wanted more than anything. Yeah. But... Um, so, she won, by the way, first cycle ever, and she won 30 pounds on each lift. Yeah. Because that's Why not? possible. Exactly. But live, live dangerously. Yeah. But at <laughs> this point, I've I've come to understand what Julian's meant when he said you have to become the person who can move that weight. I understood at that moment in time I was you not done that hurt. I didn't put yeah. in the work to be yeah. able to move that bar yeah. safely. And again, as a, yeah. Like, but I think I think I think knowing that. Oh, is the everything. majority of that lesson mm -hmm. because yeah. now you know that your process has to go towards changing that mm -hmm. and not so much about like I just got to keep ripping this fucking bar off the floor because that's I mean that's part of it but it's not all but of it. that's, and that's right. not what's they, holding they, you back there's so either. much more than just did you now he's poking me to <laughs> Jesus Christ don't start barking <laughs> um, he's um, where was I yeah uh, there's so much more that goes into being able to be able to perform at your Max, like on command, like this, it takes so much more mentally than you think. And strength, people don't understand that, is when you start to reach like truly high numbers, which over 400 is for a woman, your nervous system gets bit to shit. Like yeah. you have a capacity to recover. And you wake up in the morning, you're fucking beat up. Like, you know, like, uh, I make fun of conditioning, but I admire CrossFit tremendously. But I can, and I've done plenty of it, you know, with MMA, you have to mm -hmm. do a lot of conditioning. Um, you get beat up, for example, doing MMA. You, know, you get punched a lot. And those conditioning workout, the 20 minute, 30 minute roll and everything, they beat you up. But I've never feel beat up at night, like after a heavy strongman session where I go into a bowl and my entire body shuts off. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally, there's more than once, probably uh, five, six times, where I had to ask help to basically get off the floor, unbend myself and get to bed. Like not carried, but I was like, you gotta help me. Like mm -hmm. I need help getting up and you know, I'm like this. And there were nights where I was like, I'm gonna stay right here. Just bring me a blanket, I'll sleep. And then I would wake up at three going, now I'm capable of going to bed. Yep. Like I've never been beat up like that as to strength training. It takes, a dim takes you into a dimension that unless you've truly reached a certain level of strength you don't understand what it does to your body yeah. like your entire it feels like your spine is shutting off yeah. to make matters worse the beginning of the cycle is when Julian decided we were going to wear a neoprene for the rest of our life what a sweetheart <laughs> right around week five it was a good experiment to make it's I a great it's a great experiment now right around week five but it I, took you this entire time to come to terms with the fact that Week right, five, I finally right. got caught. I was not putting the neoprene on <laughs> until after I was finished with my working sets. Oh. Because I didn't want yeah. anything to get in the way but of she, my... Then one day she let it slip. We were there, was like, I don't put it from the beginning. I was like, Richard, what? Richard came down and he goes, where are your shorts? I'm like, what? And like, I where was are like, your shorts? And I was like, what do you mean, what? He was like, but I don't wear them. I legitimately laid you down. Said, you, you said for the muscle that don't work. They're working. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes. And so I was like, what? You mean you have not worn? She was like, no, I haven't. And so I was like, you mean, you mean like I should wear it for every set? Yeah. You put them on and, and then they stay on until you're done with your session. So I was like, oh, that's not what I understood. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, so now week five comes about and she has to wear the shorts yeah. the entire session. By the, so between exactly what he was saying with his strongman sessions, like it was getting to the point where, and not in a broken sense, but I was tired. Like trying to sit up straight at mm -hmm. the dinner table was hard. By the way, I did not envision the neoprene to work as well as he has worked. Yeah. I understood it would get me to a sympathetic state, but it allowed me to discover things I did not know I would. The reason I believe we don't under, we didn't, no one saw the potential of that is that no one wants to do strength work with neoprene. No. It fucks you up. You go like, why would I do it? I can't maintain the intensity. It makes, and it changes my form. Like I feel different when I wear it. Yeah, because it puts certain muscles that are in freeze to work. The problem is those muscles, by definition, have never worked that hard. So now you're using them on heavy lifts. It changes your form. And it might force you to take a step back at the beginning, which you never anticipated. So that's what we saw in, in week six. a bit of an ego check almost. Well, like, no, fuck, but even that, he fucked with her because yeah. week six comes about and normally she's overly into external torque. Mm -hmm. She descends the weight and she's, when I met her, she was arched like this, like yeah. she was Brazilian, like literally working with her ass back and everything. So now I'm giving her the internal torque, which means psoas, low abs, hammies, mm -hmm. Glutes max are working. So now she's using it on the squat, but now she can't external torque her way out of she it anymore. Switch, yeah. yeah. And so we get to the triples and she gets pinned into that moment because she doesn't know she has lost the skill of external torque out of the hole because that's all she used before. Yeah. And so on top of it, the neoprene made her use muscle she didn't use before. So when I saw that on week five, I was like, you're not making it to week seven. There's no fucking way. Like, don't, by the way, I don't know that you should make it to week seven because you are using muscles that have never been used at that weight. I was like, that's probably not a good idea. Week six comes about or week seven come seven. about. Week seven come about and she's in the triple. And the same thing happened on all three lifts. She failed the third rep. But the first two looked great, yeah. especially the second one. But the third one, those struct assistance work muscle like what i she's mean by that. too smoked from everything for the, the whole two thing. reps because finally she used those muscle on two reps i'm like i find it amazing that you got two out of three using muscle that i were in freeze before and imagine the impact on the nervous system right where the that flow under pressure has to work in a capacity has never worked before i was like you made it to week seven i find that extremely impressive yeah. like with the neoprene and everything i would expect you to explode by week six yeah. The fact that she made week six, I was like, shit, she's strong. In a, in a more positive way than it sounds, it was, I was at the point where I actually didn't feel like I could command my body to do what it was supposed to be yeah. doing. Like, I knew how to squat. I knew the pattern of a squat, but I couldn't... Couldn't bring it in. Couldn't bring them day. together. Yeah. Like, to the point, yeah. he, um, on that week seven, um, he introduced me to the um, Anderson squat. So I'd never done them before. Yeah, because yep. she can't do additional talk anymore. But, I'm like, but also, by the way, on a positive note, I, for me, thank you for <laughs> finally getting off my case. Um, I take it as a very positive note because suddenly I'm seeing her hammies, like I'm seeing her all lift and you could tell she, she could not engage inside hammies, she could not engage mm -hmm. her glutes. Her ass got so much bigger, her legs got so much bigger since I met her, right? So it's working, but it took its toll. But in a positive way, like mm -hmm. first of all, she's gonna have to now learn to squat not just using her lumbar erectors, but the whole body. So all positive, but it required one step back. So by yeah. the way, one step back, what does that mean? I mean, she couldn't do the third rep. At a number that was probably too high because she put the numbers to start the cycle that wasn't. So yeah. me, I see that cycle as a complete success yeah. Yeah. because neural output got better and neoprene will help. Skill got better. Capacity of muscle to contract got better. You gain the legs, you gain muscle in the right places. but I think where, because by the way, that day, she was not a happy person. Yeah. Because suddenly it was like, well, why would I fail at three? I'm shit, I'm not strong anymore. I'm weaker than I was. That's a conversation. So she comes to me and she's like, I'm weaker than I was two years ago. I was like, really? What was your max um, deadlift three years ago? 385. I'm right? the same exact weight and I'm worse than I was. Right. I was like, you just did 365 for three. Yeah, what's your point? <laughs> okay. Uh, did you bench that much back then? No. Okay. How did, what did you squat that much? What you're squatting now? What's your point? I'm, I'm just... <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. So she was in a little bit of a mood because she failed. The problem is she thought she should be able to do three reps. Yeah. And I told her like, 
right now, you don't understand the accumulation of work and of progress that you've made in the last six weeks. You have changed everything, muscle you never used before, a different skill while doing it on command, while shifting to very, very strength work. And by the way, doing all my strongman training on the side. Yeah. But like you don't understand what you just accomplished. Yeah. But that's also something that happens to a lot of um, crossfitters where they used to do what they think is so much work. And now we're putting so much so much more and so less time, especially weight-wise, that it wrecks them and it takes, it, that's why we say it takes so long to get strong because yeah. the accumulation of work just fucks you up. And it's work you have to recover from. Yeah. This is oh. it's not just like like some lungs and light legs stuff. It, it, is, it does get to the point where it's yeah. like, you, you have to recover from because otherwise you can't fucking do anything. And you had asked you know? me like, you know, how long are you gonna take before you start your next one? Could I take a week off and go into it again? Yeah, but I don't want to because I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's like, the thing is, so I, th I think I think to zoom back here. How are we for time? We're yeah, we're about. So it's a good point. So I want to zoom back, just like you're about to do. We'll go back and what now from this this first run at it, right? Yes. What did you? What is your takeaways specifically? Yep. And then maybe what? What are you doing the next, next yep. thing? How yep. are you going to go from what you learned here to the next? Yeah. So the I learned places in the skills that I'm deficient. Like going back to moving a moderate load for 10 reps, but one rep at a time, making each one in the squat the same so I can learn that jump pattern again. Mm -hmm. And by the way, using the same muscle on every rep. Mm -hmm. Not going all over the place. It's the same squat every single time. Yeah. Adding the pause sumos back in because that was really helping me in terms of just of building tension, strength and yeah. tension um, and like having some sort of technique on the bench because every rep it was a matter of it's not that so, I can't do it I just my my grip was too low and I lowered the bar too much so that wasn't the right place. She close gripped mm -hmm. 195 basically yeah she's so fucking strong so I, <laughs> I know I, I want to take the time to learn so that the next time through it's I don't say well it's because I don't know what I'm doing yeah like then I can say well, I know what I'm doing, and I just need to keep getting stronger. Yeah, or, or do it better. Yeah. Okay, that's not how this works. Like, I'm, I'm not coaching you. I'm just <laughs> saying in general. That's that's one. That's another thing that I learned. I've never been coached, mm -hmm. and now I have the man that I live with trying to coach me. I'm not. It's an added stressor. It's a it, major added I'm not, stressor. I am not. It is, you. and and I take his feedback and I roll with it. And it's, it's weird in a strange sense, like when he's telling me things, I literally only see him as a coach. Mm -hmm. When he said, honey, I, this is not me coaching you. You need to be done. Was, the, was when I was like, okay, you're right. Because <laughs> you guys have said this before, a woman will kill herself to try and impress her coach. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or to do what they're saying. So if you're a dude coach, and you have a girl athlete, yeah. if you say jump, she don't, won't even ask you how high, she'll just do it. Yeah. She will go fight Jaws with her bare hands for you. That's the responsibility you have to take seriously. Now, yeah. let me go over what she said first, for one second. You did one cycle. You don't know the skill of lifting yet. No. This will take you, no, but people need to understand. It, will, it took me five years to learn how to squat, and I was still fucking up, by the way. I still think I could have squat 600. I sh will squat 600 if I apply myself to it just by learning that jump pattern that I never did. I was actually at a very, very good good morning. Yeah. I good morning 550, mm -hmm. which is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think that I squatted it. Um, you, you are, uh, I believe your second cycle is when you will start to learn the technique of powerlifting. I think your first cycle was just like, I don't know that. Yeah. I need to learn. Don't think for a second you're going to go in the, in the second cycle knowing to lift you don't it will take you years but that also tells you the potential that you yeah. have moving forward i i believe you will be in the top five world class uh when three years i always treat the skill stuff anyways it's like you know it's like if you just dumped out a whole bucket of candy on the fucking floor it's like okay that's where things are and now i need to start sorting and picking them up and exactly. that's what you kind of see those first couple cycles yes you'll get stronger but under one of the one or two of the three different components of strength that yeah. we talk about and you may only get better at one of them on this cycle but you're going to see everything and I hopefully if you do it i think that's what you did right yeah you, you can now see like all right i now have I, these holes i do believe the skill 
that it re represents to lift in those conditions and just the lift themselves is really, really underrated. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that people believe that learning to lift power lift of strong men is in their head is going to happen much faster than in reality. It's far more demanding on different level than people understand. Yeah. And so that's why people are two, three cycles. I know how to bench. Fuck no. Yes, at 80% or 90%. When it comes to truly benching, like knowing exactly where the bar should touch on your chest. Do you know that? Like, not mm -hmm. you, but just all there. Do you know yeah. exactly where it should touch? And we're not talking like two inches down. No, no, no. The exact spot where the bar has to hit every time. Do you know how to get the bar there? Do you have to look at it? Or can you know exactly the path until it touches the proper? Steffi Cohen posted a month ago saying like she just realized that putting the bar two inches lower allow her to engage her lats better. Yeah. And she's already bench pressing 100 kilos for three or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's far more, comp it's, it's more than you think. Yeah. The thing that I find the most striking when I talk to the community around me and also when I think about it is the level of uh, commitment, but also like difficulty that comes with trying to be like, okay at something and trying to master something exactly. like when I did I CrossFit because I liked doing competitions with my friends on the weekends mm -hmm. and I wanted to be fit like that was one thing and then when I switched to I want to qualify for these things and and kick ass while I'm there was a were two completely different types of training when I when I think about powerlifting I think of it as the same way if you just want to be like conventionally strong and lift some weights cool if your plan is to be extremely successful in the sport Holy shit, is it hard? Yeah. And it's like to feel and it that, should be, right? like, oh, That's I'm doing I'm right. doing this level of training and it's really hard and you're doing that and all you do is move a barbell. If you're saying that, you're an idiot. Because you you're not you're totally taking away mm -hmm. how hard this really is to to not just be okay at something. Yeah. Like it, it's hard. To be good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's the reason it's I, I that I have a lot of respect for the sport is because it is it is it looks so simple. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's so, so, but, but that's why I think the nature of that really can be, like we talk about with mastery, is it's like, this isn't a million things that you got to get kind of okay at. Yeah. This is three And days. I'm not even and, thinking about weight classes at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah. depending on if I go to 72 or a higher one, like if I go to a higher one, I've got a lot of By the way, do. if you're listening to this <laughs> at all, you don't even get to give a fuck about a weight class for your first three meets. Yeah, exactly. You don't even just three like, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it should just you just show up how you show up. That's like if you if if cutting three kilos or two kilos of water just to hit weight makes you feel less strong again, on your yeah. first meet, you've already fucked up. No, but again, if you plan on doing strong. one yeah. powerlifting competition ever, sure, cut three kilos, oh, whatever, see where you fit. By the way, stick at ninety five percent of your maxes, you'll have a good experience. Yeah. Because remember, you're doing one competition, you're there to have fun. Yeah. Right. You, you don't get to do it both ways. You don't get to treat, I'm going to do one powerlifting competition every year, every two years or whatever. I just want to have fun. And then you get there and then you pretend to be And serious. then get upset because yeah, you get upset. Like, I want to choose 100%. Like, no, you just say you want to have fun. Then you get, by the way, you get to choose your numbers. You go, you'll know that, right? So that means 95, 96%. Yeah. On all lifts, you pass that, get nine out of nine. Yeah. Do a powerlifting machine, get 9 out of 9. Don't do 80%. Do 95%. Challenge yourself in an environment you don't know. Have fun. It's a great experience. You learn a lot about yourself. It's um, Bill Starr who, uh, who said, um, do a competition. You learn more in one competition than six months of training. Yeah. And that is true. You will learn a lot. About <coughs> oh, hey, Rue. Rue, buddy. You will learn that's a baby that, uh, that, that baby she, he hates. He hates that baby. It's a freaky because it sounds like a cat. It's not me that doesn't want to have kids. It's real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sounds like a cat. So uh, you learn more okay. in one competition that you will in six months of training. And that is true. You will learn stuff about yourself in, under the gun that is valuable to you. Now, if your plan is to be really strong one day, are you going to take one of my pull balls to throw at him because that's not <laughs> happening like you beat him up as much as you want but not with my stuff not with the chalk either <laughs> she was going to throw the pull no you don't get by the way this is going to leave blue stuff everywhere so you and that's mine remember we said about the pool table no touchy no no like he will not ruin my pool experience he's already out there judging me every time i play You're welcome. and you are not going because then he's going to start chasing the chalk every time no that is not happening do not set that up like that he, otherwise he'll go on the table to get it after i know how this works no 
Anyway, so if you plan on being really good, then have a two-year plan. Play where the long game. The, yeah. I, I would say, the because that's the way I look at it for pool now, is my first 10 tournaments don't count. Yeah. Because I don't want the added pressure, otherwise they'll fuck me up. So I told myself, I get added what, three, no, four? No, four with mm -hmm. a plan B. So I got six more where they don't count. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll try my best because I always do. But my, my thing is the first five minutes don't count. I don't yeah. care. I don't care what you do. And you should not care. Go. Obviously, you will care, but you know what I mean. Like The result should be like, that's, that's a learning experience. That's what the yeah. first five minutes are. Don't cut weight. Get whatever number, try to get nine out of nine. That should be your goal for the first five minutes is nine out of nine, three lifts, three, ten, three uh, tries per lift, right? Three lifts, nine out of nine, no cutting weight. And you get whatever you get. And the point is, by the fifth minute, you should be better than on your first. Yeah. I think that's it. You should not, if you want to be good at this, that should be your mindset. Yeah, and two, two notes to that too is one, in that sport too, it's very different than what you'll see at a CrossFit gym and, uh, and even people who don't compete. Is it in that sport? It doesn't matter what you can do in the gym. Once you get to there, it, it only matters what you put on the Instagram, platform. Instagram, Facebook, nothing else. And, I, and, I, and I, like, I, I like that aspect of it because it reminds me similar to playing, playing like I would say, playing real sports. Okay, is that is that like nobody gives a fuck how many points you put up in a practice, dude? Yeah. It never Sorry, counts. guess what? Nobody wrote that down. Yeah. So who gives a fuck? Because everybody knows that that's the thing with pool is everybody tells you it's under the gun. Yeah. Everybody can practice really well, and yeah. we all know that, right? Yeah. But I don't play like that in practice. Everybody's like, yeah, but guess what? This is a money game, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what pool is for. Pool yeah. is for gambling competition. That's the only thing that matters. It's like, but that's basically how the the game is played. It's like you shoot well in practice. There's 20 bucks. Yeah. Do it again. That's literally the game of pool is that. And I think in a lot of ways, that's what pro sports are. Or even like sports you're trying to be good at is the question. And that's the only question that exists is, yeah, but under the gun, how do you perform? Better or worse? Mm -hmm. And what does that say about you? Because it's that there's a gun. Go ahead. Let's see. And then we see your true potential. Yeah. And by the way, some athletes do better in training than in competition. Some do better in competition than in training. But Again, it's raising that time after time after time after time. Well, and that's it. Is the important thing is that I think, especially with strength, it's such a long, it's a long game. Yep. Oh, and yeah. I think it was. Uh, yes. It might have been a Chris Moore who said it, but it was like we need to set a low trajectory to a far away target. Yes. You I agree cannot completely. just do this. Hey, yes. I got a, this. Is a mistake I see a lot of people do all the time. They'll come out across and be like, "I'd like to do a powerlifting meet because it's fun and good. Bless your heart." Yep. But don't sell out the next year of your training for this three months before. Right. The meet. So we're going back to good house law. Yeah. Right. Uh, when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. If you're doing a powerlifting competition to know where you are strength-wise, then don't make it a target. Yeah. Keep it a measure, which what powerlifting is for me. It's a, it's a measure of how strong I am overall, but it's not my target. So therefore, I, um, we're going to go into this. trading in next. real progress yeah. for the So number. I'm not really training to get a max squat. Right? I'm curious to know where it is as a measure of my strength overall, but it is not my target. Yeah, right? it's a piece and, of an overall measure. And yeah. so what are you doing that for? Right, Because now, uh, in that her case, powerlifting will be a measure and a target at the same time. Right, So you have to be careful though that you don't train that max squat for an overall gain of strength. So that's why if you go too fast, yeah, you'll progress on your back squat, but you can't get overall stronger anymore for a year because you're beat to shit. Mm -hmm. Then the measure became a target. And that's <coughs> also the danger. So that, that brings the point is, uh, now that you've done a cycle, how will you approach the next one? What are you going to do first? You said you have work to do, so how are you going to approach that? I'm going to take four weeks to refine the movement a little more. At the beginning of the next cycle, or now you mean? Right now. Oh, right now, okay. And then in the begin, in the start of the next cycle, taking every repetition, re just reinforcing the skill. So important for women out there, because uh, I know at some point you gain a little bit of weight. Is that because you went lower on the fats and higher on the carbs? Is that what happened? I don't know. I'm just asking a question. I think it's we're a out podcast. Of time. And, um, Tyler said we're out of time. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. So I'm sure it has nothing to do with that. But uh, how's that protocol, my friend? Uh, so you basically are upping the conditioning a little bit at a time. So you're going to rebuild the engine mm -hmm. a bit, right? And basically bodybuilding, right? Yeah. So higher reps, which yeah. I honestly, because I'm going to do. So I, I'll talk about this because this is, I think, where uh, we might put a that template out, mm -hmm. calling the power template. It's kind of a, power. <coughs> we're talking about that with, yeah. with Tyler. That might be our strong feed power template, because yeah. I'm following the same cycle, the Cohen. But so I'll explain what we're going to talk, what she's doing. I'm going to explain what I'm doing. So I'm going to look at it the same way. Six, seven weeks cycle of strength. 
either preceded or followed whatever you want to do it by some bodybuilding. What do I mean by that? I discovered that I absolutely cannot do bench press for 10. So I'm going to spend three, four weeks on that. Yeah. I need to build a str the tricep strength. So I'm going to do more. It's not really bodybuilding. It's just higher rep scheme. Yeah. Right. For three, four weeks, not really and figuring out where you lose it. You yeah, know, so you got to do it enough for where, yes. why and is this my, good until And then, you know, my left shoulder does weird mm -hmm. stuff like eight and nine, so I think it's actually my upper back lowering the bar. So I'm going to figure it out for three, four weeks. I need, I, I, there's certain holes that need to be fixed. That's going to be my four weeks. And then I'm going to do a, an eight coin cycle. So the way I do it is I'm going to keep, it does 10, eight, then it goes five, uh, three, two, ones, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to go 10, eight, six, so it's 10, 10, eight, eight, six, six, four, four. Yeah. Because for me, it's a measure of my strength and not my target. I don't need the, I don't like, I don't like the doubles. Yeah. It takes too much out of me. Once I start, for example, if I squat and they lift heavy in the same week, I'm ruined. Mm -hmm. I can't press anymore. I can't do strongman. So for me, I have to be very careful. So I'm going to basically get to fours because that template for me is for strongmen. Okay. By the way, we didn't talk about all this, but as part of the assistance work, I don't do the head coin assistance work. I do strongmen. Yeah. And some power and building. And you pick because you pick those specifically based upon things that you have Yeah, because out of I that. want the powerlifting to make me stronger at, at strongmen. Yeah, I want to be strong overall. So again, for me, powerlifting is a measure, not a target, yeah. right? So it's a little bit different than her because she's going to have to learn the skill of lifting at a much higher degree than I do. Yeah. Because I won't compete in strongman, but I still like the the. I like to work on the sumo deadlift. It's great for my skinny legs, right? So it actually make, makes my legs stronger. I like the pulse squats. So mm -hmm. she's doing a normal template of squats and a conventional deadlift, whereas me, I do sumo deadlift, which is my by far my weakest lift. Yeah. My best sumo was 500, I think. Where my I did 600 for three conventional. So I do sumo or sumo of the blocks. And instead of pure squats, I do power squats because I believe they bring me more from, for strongmen. Yeah. And then I do my strongmen on the side. So usually I do uh, the head coin is four days and assistance work. And one day of assistance work, which is upper, lower, upper, lower assistance work. Mm -hmm. Me, I do upper, lower. So let's say bench and squat. And then I'll do strongmen mm -hmm. and then uh, deadlift, pressing, strongmen with as many days off in, in between. Yeah. yeah. So usually it's not a seven day week for me. It's more like a 10 to 11 day week because okay. it beats the shit out of me. But so mine is a power template. Her is more a powerlifting template because we get her to competition. She still works assistance work on strong men. So it makes the head core and cycle much harder as well. So I we're going to have to play with it a little bit differently. I do squat, bench, rest, um, deadlift, press. deadlift, press. And then my third day, if I, feel good, yeah. um, I'll play. I'll just do whatever it was that I really wanted to do that I didn't have the either the capacity to do or the time to do. Um, but the first 45 minutes of my session is the template, and then the accessory work is done on a clock. So it's like, it's essentially my conditioning. Yeah, yeah. and she does still assistance work is done with strongman movements. That's where the sandbag carries, all that stuff comes in. So it's not the Ed Cohen assistance work, it's her own. That is more taxing than the Ed Cohen one. So that's why we're gonna do six, seven weeks max, and we'll take her probably to doubles. I don't know that I'll, sorry, I'm not her coach, so I can't say it like that. I don't know that her coach will make her do singles, like in the head coin cycle yeah. and everything. I'm, even doubles. Because I would be say no much. matter what anyways, the, your first attempt in every one of those lifts will be something you easily can do for two. And so your second will three. be right on the fringe, yeah. meaning well, if I, I don't want to be holding my third attempt before I do it. If yeah, I get through I'm, to the doubles, that that it it is, is my one rep max. Yeah. Four doubles yeah. is the way that this program is written. So I so. two sets of two, like so we might be one set of two instead. It will be less taxing than the two eight current cycle. And again, we'll stop it. No matter what, we'll stop it at week seven. Same thing for me. Mm -hmm. I'll, I don't care. Like, by the way, the German system had something where if you get a PR, you're done for the day, no matter what. Yeah. Like even if you hit on the first set, you're done for the day. And then they would reset the cycle completely. So I... I I agree with that completely. You get a PR somewhere, you're done for the cycle. Yeah. So if she hits, not for the fives, but you know, like she hits a PR double, you're done for the day, you're done for the cycle. Yeah. The second we get into threes, like if she can, let's say she, we get into a monster cycle and when she hit for three, she hits a five, we're done. Yeah. I'm shutting off the cycle on everything, on all yeah. lifts. Because again, 35 pounds per year per lift. That's it. Yeah. If we do this correctly in three years, she's Hall at twelve. Numbers, she's yeah. at twelve hundred plus. Yeah. yeah. We, do you understand we what do that, that means? We do that by the end of the year, and I'm over a thousand. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, but so <laughs> I, we get to that cycle, especially in the maybe not in the fives, but in the threes. I see a PR on the threes. We shut off the cycle yeah. for everything. I let her if she did that on the squat or the lift. I let, I let her try push maybe the bench. It or builds the press. in that adaption phase for you. Yeah. And by the way, it also celebrates the PRs. You guys have to stop underrating the importance of PRs. I see that all the time. Well, I got a PR, I'm super happy, but then they keep doing the cycle. Or, put I'm on, like, you're... or, or let me throw on two more kilos and see what I yes. get Yes, it's like oh, stop good. destroying the PRs. Like yeah. a PR, that bitch doesn't come, doesn't come around often nope. anymore. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I, she used to come around and say, hi, she doesn't visit anymore that often. Like, no, no, she, she has you, moved on. She has moved on to better pasture. Is might, that because I got older? She might call you late at night once or yeah. twice a year. But it's a booty call now. Yeah, you're not even right? going to feel used, good about it. To talk relationship with her, and now now I'm a booty call. Yep. Sorry, uh, <laughs> like I'm I'm offended on What's this. Her name exactly. I feel like it's because I got older. I'm shaving now. Anyway. Um, so like celebrate the PR. Yeah. You got a massive PR. You're done yeah. for the day for the cycle. Like go around, get some, get go get booze or something. But yeah. the importance of celebrating PRs. It's gone out the way. I think that's Instagram stuff now. Yeah. Everybody, they get a PR, they go like, they're happy for a day, they go like, yeah, but now what? Yeah. Now what? Now you take a fucking week off and re or go to bodybuilding for four weeks, reset the cycle. You don't understand. Like, when people don't celebrate PR, they tell me they're young, mm -hmm. either mentally or literally young, yeah. because they don't understand the importance of that. Like, it's, you get a 20 pound PR, you have no idea how much that counts. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't celebrate it, you're making sure you're winning the next cycle because then your body has no reason to go there because even when you lift heavier, you keep on going. Plus, so you have no reason to lift heavier. Your body's like, fuck it. Well, yeah. that's what's important, yeah. right? Is if you do continue. And it's like, well, no, no, you've done it. You've accomplished. It's not more than you. It's like, if you keep going and find a point of recklessness beyond that, yeah. it's like, you've just lost, or at the very least, you haven't lost all of it, but you now have to cover some more of that ground, at least from a prediction but standpoint. Now, I, I believe you you've lost there. it because the body has no reason to keep pushing. If Even when you get a you PR. You gave it a reason not to trust it now. Exactly, because no matter what, I lift more weight, there's nothing good coming out of you lifting more weight. Why would the system allow you to keep going since there is no reward? Yeah. You have annulated the, the reward system that the body learns from. So he has no reason to let, let you get heavier. I have had enough hobbies in my life. If I'm going to do this to myself on a regular basis, I'm sure as shit going to do it for more than one time. Yeah. yeah. And to be good at it. Right? And I'm going to enjoy it. Like every <laughs> yes. second of it. Because yeah. it, otherwise, I'm, I'm literally just throwing myself into a meat grinder. Well, plus, yeah, why do you want to just jump into a thing just to like, be like, well, I just got to fucking hate this and have it be different for a year. It's Ooh, like, that well, was no. cool. Did that Does that, go do something like, else. Does that sound like a successful way to do this for the next no, 10 years? Because again, it's going to take you five years to be strong. Do you want to feel like shit for the next five years? Yep. Never celebrating a PR, never being happy, ne sorry, joyful about who you are and what you're accomplishing. Never look, looking, going like, man, I can play. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's enjoy the PRs, guys. Like again, like like German system. You get a PR, you're done. Yeah. If you get a PR on triples, doubles, single, you're done for the cycle. Yeah, that should be the way to go. I think that's got us at a late point already. Oh shit! Yeah, that was a good one. Though. It was good. No, because I wanted to cover the whole. That was cycle. good, it's, and I, and I like too because we went through the whole kind of kind of the whole process. Yeah, the whole cycle. Later, yeah, which like, is, we, we which should is do that good more because, often because yeah. we've gone through with Kayla specifically the neoprene introduction and all that stuff, but we hadn't actually covered the the application on what you're using it yep. for. So I think that's really valuable. So it's, it's but it's, the neoprene has been incredible on that. Like it allows you to use muscle you never used before. Yeah. She never felt the neoprene same places I did ever really? on the bench or the squat or the deadlift. It was always different places. It's a, it's fascinating to see. We've um, we'll be back next week. Yeah, we'll do another in one. Theory. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be here next. Yeah, it will be next. Week. Yeah, you will next because we have yeah. two more morning. Yeah. Don't worry, Rue will, will be here. Rue will be here. He'll be here as well. Yep. So yeah. uh, you can find everything at strongfit.com. Strongfit.com is going to have seminars, all of that good stuff. We've got strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu. We have the big apprenticeship month coming up in September. We also have during that month we have the performance workshop, nutrition, nervous system workshop. We've got the actual seminar, the actual coaches week. So all that's included in the apprenticeship yep. month, plus a whole month of in-person stuff. Yep. So um, you can check all that out at strongfit.com. Uh, Julian, you can, you're can on Instagram at strongfit1. Yep. Kayla is OOK32. There is no underscore and there's two O's. I don't know what I my do not like is. that I have had to figure that out. So if out. you find it, <laughs> In good spite for you. of you. <laughs> <laughs>
I tag you all the time. I yeah. have no idea. Yeah. And I'm Tyler. You can find me at Tyler F. and Stone on Instagram. And that'll do it for this week. JulianScorner.com. And we're good for this week. God, I fucking... Fuck every every brand single new. thing but one He's thing. He's a dog. He does that. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next week.